The reason people were getting at me in the comments is because children love entrepreneurship, they don't love business. Eight years ago, I went on a mission to teach entrepreneurship to kids from seven years old. And not only did it completely change my life, but it destroyed everything I knew about success, ambition, and business. So in this video, I'm going to share with you what I learned delivering entrepreneurial education to over 30,000 kids here in the UK. But make sure to stick with me to the end of the video where I share what I genuinely didn't think kidpreneurs would ever achieve. So when I first started ultra education, teaching entrepreneurship to children from seven years old, I'd get people in the comments saying to me, Julian, why are you teaching kids? about business let them be children let them enjoy their lives i was a little bit confused because i really enjoyed being an entrepreneur granted i wasn't a child but we had kids who genuinely enjoyed the process of creating products and services that they were passionate about and then i realized that the reason people were getting at me in the comments is because children love entrepreneurship they don't love business so what do i mean by that some of you would have seen the banana meme that exists explains the difference between an entrepreneur and a business person. And in this image, it shows what an entrepreneur would do with a banana and what a business person would do with a banana. And it shows that a business person would take a banana for 10 pence and sell it for 20 pence. Whereas an entrepreneur would take that banana and turn it into banana juice. So what the entrepreneur does is the entrepreneur creates something new, different, fresh and exciting where the business person is just trying to find a way in which they can be transactional. And when you're just being transactional, there's nothing genuinely interesting about that. There's no purpose. There's no love for increasing profits. And if you're only thinking transactionally, then no, there is no purpose. There is no enjoyment. There's nothing to be passionate about. The ability to increase your prices is great. There is more profit in there. But before you're able to increase the profits on a particular product or service, you've got to start with something that you are genuinely passionate about. And often the thing that excites on entrepreneurs is that they are creating something new. And this is exactly the same feeling that children and young people get when they engage with entrepreneurship. This idea that they can do something new, something exciting that's not been done before that solves a problem which they are passionate about. When my daughter was seven years old, she was a real foodie. When her cousins would come around, they were on a pretty strict vegan diet. So she could eat some chocolate treats that they couldn't. Now my daughter seeing this problem and being a bit of a creative in the kitchen, even from a young age, got together with her mum and created a vegan chocolate spread that was tasty enough for her to enjoy, but healthy enough for her cousins to enjoy. And my daughter really loved the idea of coming up with this product, branding it, giving it a name, and being able to share it with her cousins and further to that with other people in and around her community. And we ended up going to events, we sold it online. And that process of entrepreneurship, she loved. I recently recorded a video about a young author called Tyler David, who at four years old wrote his first book about aliens and used it as a way to help adults teach kids about healthy eating habits because that's something that was meaningful to him. I've also done a video on another young entrepreneur and author called Mia who wrote a book called All About Wild Animals and when I spoke to Mia she said that she came up with the book title, the cover, she came up with all the images that she wanted, she produced it all in a nice document and then she went to print and not only that she did it under her own publishing company and when she was explaining it to me it was clear that Mia thought that this was just normal and that anybody should be able to do this. And this is an isolated way of thinking because Tyler didn't think it was odd to write 45 books. All he was doing was creating stories based on characters that he had created. So let me put it to you this way. If I told you through the course of a season or two, there was a 10 year old who played 45 games of football, or like my son who's been a performer in West End theater and he's appeared on a few TV shows, performing 45 times in theater is pretty normal, even if you're a child. Playing 45 games of football, again, is pretty normal, even if you're a child. Or let me put it to you this way. If you met a child who'd written a book with 45 poems in it, you probably wouldn't be surprised. The only thing that Tyler's done differently is packaged it. He's put a book cover, given it a name, compiled it and published it. And over the course of four or five years, Tyler now has 45 books under his belt. But because kids don't see the world in the same way that we do, 
which essentially means they have far less limiting beliefs. It means that what they think is possible goes beyond the confines of what we think is possible for them. So what we found in teaching entrepreneurship to kids is that if we present an idea that they can create a product, create a service, that they can speak on a particular topic that they can present, that they can challenge, that they can get together and do amazing things, they'll take that idea on board without putting the same barriers in place that a grown up would. Now, because kids are growing up in a world where there is a lot more awareness around health and around sustainability and the environment, We've seen in our workshops that when kids are considering their business ideas, they are weaving into the fabric of that enterprise, sustainability, health, and a consideration for the environment. As an example, one of our entrepreneurs, Precisa, has a brand of deodorants called Healthy Kind Deodorants, which are deodorants using natural products so that it could be kinder to her own skin. She realizes that lots of people have allergies and skin conditions and has experienced some of that herself and came up with a product that she could benefit from, but other people can too. About three or four years ago, we were invited to a roundtable discussion with Oxford University at level 39 with a number of business leaders. And I said, I was only gonna go along if some of our young entrepreneurs could accompany me. And so we had about five or six of our kidpreneurs in the space taking in the discussion. And the discussion we were having with these business leaders was how they can inject purpose into their business because they realized that people don't want to do business with organizations and enterprises who don't have a clear purpose, whether it's for community, environment, social impact. They want to do business with companies that have a conscience. Now, halfway through, I looked at our kidpreneurs and they were a little bit confused huh? because in our workshops when they were developing the ideas for their products and services it already had elements of sustainability it already had elements of purpose because we define an entrepreneur to a seven-year-old as someone who does what they love and they make money from it so in doing what you love that's usually connected to a purpose that's usually connected to a cause and if they are developing products they are already thinking about sustainability they're already thinking about the planet they're already thinking about how that product and service can impact not just themselves, but the people around them. So purpose was already a natural part of those enterprises. So when they were listening to these grown-ups wondering how they were going to bolt purpose onto their enterprises, they kind of looked at me as if to say, well, aren't we already doing that? And in that discussion, I had to raise the point to the rest of these business leaders that actually maybe we need to pass the baton to the next generation of entrepreneurs who can create genuinely compelling enterprises because generations can see through corporates trying to inauthentically bolt on purpose to an already established business. So why not partner with the next generation of businesses, align with them because they already have purpose and use that to create a more sustainable future, a more purposeful business environment and one that people can genuinely buy into. But the one thing that I genuinely didn't think kidpreneurs were going to be able to do was achieve the level of confidence that we've seen in these young entrepreneurs. So let me give you an example. In 2019, we ran one of our really popular kids business fairs on the executive floor in Microsoft's flagship store in Oxford Circus. And towards the end of the event, we had about 40 kidpreneurs in the space exhibiting their products and services. Everyone was having an amazing time. Towards the end of the event, we got everyone into the main room and the idea was that we would have the kids stand up and just for one minute, pitch their businesses and tell everybody what they were doing, why they did it in an effort to drive some last minute sales. So in this room, there were about a hundred people and each one of the kids would go up one at a time and spend no longer than a minute telling everyone about their businesses and then something magical happened there was a little girl who was no older than seven or eight years old she had these little butterfly wings on and she went up and stood in front of a hundred people and for one minute talked about the fashion brand that she wanted to create to help empower little girls to make them feel great about themselves that they could achieve anything and the manager of the store leaned over to me and said what this little little girl has done by giving this talk in front of a hundred people I couldn't get my staff to do that and I turned around and looked at her and laughed and I said I probably couldn't get my staff to do it either and we're the ones teaching them and it was a moment that we realized it wasn't just this little girl in her butterfly wings it was each one of those 40 young entrepreneurs who got up and delivered a public speech and as we know one of the greatest fears known to mankind is public speaking now why were they able to do it and even I was shocked at the time but it's because the positive reinforcement of them seeing other kids just like them going up and doing it and having the cheers and the claps from the audience made them feel really good about themselves. It made them feel better than the fear of going up and speaking in front of 100 people. And so inadvertently, 
we had found a way to break down the barrier of one of the things which most people fear. And as every professional will know, your ability to be able to communicate to a wide audience is a great skill that if you have it in your arsenal can get you really far in life and can help to open doors and not even just speak in front of 100 people. It could just be a presentation at work. It could be doing a YouTube video. It could be giving a talk at a school to a group of your peers. But being able to amplify what you think about a particular topic to a wide group of people is a really valuable skill and we were able to engender that in these young people and they were able to develop the confidence far past what we thought they were capable of in a very very short space of time so that's it guys those are some of the most valuable lessons that i've learned in delivering entrepreneurial education to over 30,000 young people in the uk i'm going to drop some links below to the kids business fairs that we've run and you tell me what you've seen that you've learned from some of our young entrepreneurs and I'll catch you on the next video, Ultra and out.